We are together again on the radio. Here is an Associated Press story that we saw in the Seattle Times. Her credentials are impressive. Coast Guard reservist. Trophy winning distance runner. Veteran of risky ground zero duty on the morning of that the World Trade Center collapsed. Yet even Adrian Walsh has felt the sting of resentment from men who do not want women alongside them in the ranks of firefighters. Walsh last year became the first woman assigned to one of New York's elite fire department rescue companies. Within five weeks, she transferred out stunned that the company members ostracized her. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. Five weeks, that's all it took for her to just say, I can't believe they don't, they don't accept me as one of the guys. I've been here five whole weeks. <laughs> that's who you want rescuing you for a burning building, huh, folks? They won't accept me. A few weeks ago, it says here she blazed another trail, this time getting a warm welcome as she joined a rescue company in a different borough. The eight-year firefighting veteran is proud of her achievements, grateful to her many male colleagues who have supported her, yet frustrated by the slow pace of change in a department and a profession where women remain a tiny minority. Walsh said, you have to change the department from the top down. You've got to show people you want them. Not only do I understand why firemen would not want a firewoman standing next to them, I, the customer, the taxpayer, the person whose house might be burning down, I do not want some five foot three thing showing up at my place purporting to be able to rescue me. I don't. And there's nothing you can do to make me change my mind. Says here nationwide, the status of women in firefighting mirrors Walsh's up and down experience. Depending upon where one looks, there is ample cause for celebration or dismay among those who want gender barriers lowered. Of roughly 296,000 professional firefighters in America... About 6,500, less than 2.5%, are women. That's up from zero as of 1972, but, quote, nowhere near the point where you lose your token status, said Teresa Florin, director of the Madison, Wisconsin-based uh, Women in the Fire Service. Very select group. Firefighting forces are more than 10% female in two of uh, America's most pulsified cities, Minneapolis and San Francisco. These are cities that also have women as fire chiefs. Hardly a surprise here that the Seattle Fire Department has 91 female firefighters, a little over 9% of the force, according to Helen Fitzpatrick, a spokeswoman for the department. But in Boston and Philadelphia, barely 1% of the firefighters are female. New York only has 29 out of more than 11,000 firefighters, less than 0.3%. So in other words, the most pussified cities have the most women in the fire department. I'd love to know the numbers in Dallas, for example. I bet you there aren't a lot in Dallas. Just to give you an example of someplace we've been recently. In many other cities, women who did get hired have complained of gender-related bias and harassment. Among the most recent cases, a federal court is weighing whether to uphold awards totaling $335,000 to two women who claimed that they were discriminated against as firefighters in Kansas City, Missouri. They said they faced retaliation for complaining they were not provided proper protective gear and bathroom facilities. What is a proper bathroom facility for a firefighter? No tampon machine? No diaper changing station? No uh, makeup mirror? Huh, girls? No Midol machine in there? Boo hoo hoo.
Two Bridgeport, Connecticut firefighters recently lost a federal court suit seeking nearly one million in damages for alleged bias and harassment. The women said they were called vulgar names and exposed to pornography. By the way, all the men were also called vulgar names and exposed to pornography, knowing what guys are like when they all get together. Thank God they lost. Says here in Los Angeles, a dozen firefighters recently were disciplined for harassment of women and blacks in the department, which has 92 women on a force of 3,382. No major fire department embodies a new approach to gender than San Francisco's, where 230 of the 1,700 firefighters are women, and the chief has a last name with a hyphen, Joanne Hayes hyphen White, 41. Hayes hyphen White said the fire service is rich in tradition, and I embrace that, but only to the point where it doesn't get in the way of moving forward towards the future, where women who don't want to break a nail have to come in and try to rescue you from a burning building. I just added that. Among the slow-to-change areas is New Jersey. The last official count in 2002 showed only 19 women among nearly 6,000 career firefighters. Slow to change. Do we need this to change? Are we in a rush on this? Is this really what we want? I'll tell you what, I want guys built like, uh, you know, built like uh, Tony Little. I want guys built who can lift me and others out of the building. I want people who can rescue me. Not people who can run inside going, look, there's a guy on the floor, can somebody help me? Please. It's not a matter of fairness. I'll tell you what's fair. If there's a fire and you physically get me out of there, that's fair. Anyone who can't shouldn't be there. Period. Men or women. Anyway. Is this something we really need? Do we need more female firefighters? Should your tax dollars be spent trying to recruit women to be firefighters? Let's face it, most women don't want to be firefighters. In fact, most men don't want to be. Is it important to have a diverse fire department? Is this an important issue to you? Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. I've talked to a lot of women, and did you know that a lot of women don't like your show? Yes, I did. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. All these people concerned about whether we have a diverse fire department, whether we've got chicks in there. Is that really important? Mark. Mark's a firefighter from Los Angeles on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, I work for I work for fire department, and, uh, man, I'll tell you what, they don't, they since they passed this affirmative action stuff and all this stuff, yeah. we're not even allowed to bring Maxim magazines or stuff or any of that stuff in. Yeah. Like, we used to be able to bring it in and be able to put it out on the table and look at it and stuff. None of that stuff. You can't have any pictures on your lockers. Right. Nothing. It's terrible. Right. I mean, I really don't understand why a new crop of guys coming up would want to go into firefighting if they have to live with these politically correct rules. I mean, part of it, and I know it because I had firefighters in my family, part of it is the camaraderie between the guys when you're not fighting fires. It's it's ridiculous, man. I, I work I work with some females, and they, they just don't pull their weight. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know what? If you they don't do pull anybody's job, weight. If they can do the job, fine. They're more than welcome to work work on the engine, but I'm an engineer, so I drive the truck, and I've, I've actually, I've told some of my female firefighters, you know what, you need to get off my truck, you know, because I can't, you know what, I can't run, I can't run my, I can't run my crew if they can't do the job. They can't pull hose, they, you know, and I'm not saying that all women can't do it, because some of them can't, but you know what, a majority of them can't do the job, and they just think that, well, I gotta be big, and I know I gotta be so badass that I can just, you know, Pull holes and I can be do anything a man can do. And uh -huh. It's ridiculous. It's a joke, man. Uh, I just wanted to call in and let you know, man. Take me out, Kobe style. Here you go, Mark. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. 
Let's say hello here to Brian on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah? Um, I just got hired down in, uh, in Southern California, and getting hired, we got hired with a couple women. And I'm six foot four. I weigh in a neighborhood of 230 pounds without all my equipment on. Right. And with my equipment, probably neighborhood about 290 to 300. Mm -hmm. We had a girl about five foot tall try to pull me. Uh, out, we simulated me lying on the ground, tried to pull me out of the building. She gave up after about about 30 seconds and walked away from me. Mm -hmm. That's my life on the line. That's not just the people that are living there at the house. It's everybody who, who's going into the building. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, who would want to be walking in behind these people? Well, so, that's just thought I'd very good question. I, You know, I keep thinking about this, and I see these stories all the time about all this diversity we need to have. We need to have diversity. Well, it's it's my life and your life on the line. So I, whether uh, I'm going in front of her, going behind her, I mean, she's out there watching my life just like I'm out there watching hers. That's I mean, that's dangerous right there. So, anyways. Thank you very much for the, letting me on. And, Brian. Uh, can you take me out with a uh, bong grip for old time's sake? Here you go. one 800 tom This is Denise on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Denise. I've been waiting years to talk to you. I've been waiting for the right topic, and here it is. Here we are. I used to be a firefighter about 12 years ago. I was 23 years old. I worked my ass off to get there, um, passed the physical test, which is what you needed to do to get hired. I know I was only considered because I was one of a certain amount of females that were interviewed. And at the time, in Burnaby, they wanted women. And so if you're a woman, you could pass the physical and you didn't have rocks in your head, you got hired. And I was one of the first three women hired in the municipality. And I passed the physical, but just barely. Um, there's a smoke ejector box you have to lift up. And with my helmet on and the air tank, I barely did it. I had to swear and get it up there. But, I mean, in a fire, am I going to be able to do it 100% of the time? And they let you into the fire department anyway. Uh, they did. I, I mean, that's outrageous. You shouldn't have gotten in. Well, you know what, Tom? I look back now, 12 years later, as a, you know, a more mature person. I'm like, hello. <laughs> what were they thinking? Mm -hmm. But they wanted women, and I wanted to be there, and I really wanted to be there. So I think I persuaded them that. But I look back, and physically, uh, no. And and maybe there are other women like that who really also should not be, have been hired. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the turning point for me is I always felt deep down, you shouldn't be here, you shouldn't be here, you're not quite good enough, and one of these days you're going to screw up and it's going to be something. What else. made you want to do that for a living anyway? Well, uh, long story short, I was in grade two. I won a firefighter uh, contest at my elementary school, drew a picture, and I thought firefighting is cool, I want to do it. And ever since grade two, that's what I wanted to do. And I worked very hard all through school. I took fire sciences, chemistry. I went to the Justice Institute, got my qualifications. Uh, but once I got into the job, I found that it wasn't for me. Uh, what The turning point that got me to leave is I was walking down the hallway. I got um, checked by uh, my lieutenant. And he just looked at me and he said, Mac, if you can't play with the big boys, you should go. And I just kind of thought, you know what? I should go. See, if you're in this country, you could have sued. You know what? I talked to the chief, and he said, if you want to sue for harassment, you can. And I was 23, and I said, you know what? No, I shouldn't be here, and I didn't. And I still, to this day, I wouldn't, because I feel if you're going to be there, you've got to be able to do the job. Right. Yeah, I got a little bit harassed, but you know what? That's the culture of the fire department, mm -hmm. and if you want to be there, you've got to play with the big boys. Exactly. Exactly, Denise. Uh, thank you for the call. Tom, blow me up. Here you go, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, I'm an L.A. firefighter myself, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll let you know how e much easier it is for a woman to get on. Uh, the first thing you got, had to do when I took the test was do the, the hose clamp. And if you couldn't do that, you couldn't even continue with the physical exam. And you had one chance to do it. Um, there was women... You know, they try it and couldn't get it down. They'd say, okay, try it again, try it again, go to the back of the line, rest, try it again. Right. If I couldn't do it, I'm gone right then. Yeah. So they were bending over backwards for these women. You know, and, and uh, actually the guy, Mark, the guy called first. I've actually worked with that guy. Um, but I'm a 19-year fireman. And, uh, you know, I'm 6'3", 230. Do you want me coming up to pull you out of a, out of a burning building or somebody 5'7", 130? 
Uh, of course. I've, I've already given you my answer to that question. Uh, you're exactly right. I, mean, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've been on, say, I'm on the third floor. And this is not the time for political correctness. We need guys who are built, guys who can lift weights. That's what we need. You know, and uh, to be honest with you, there's one woman who was good. It was, so I'm not totally against women being a firefighter. One of the best firefighters I've ever worked with was a woman, but that was one. And like I said, I've been working for 19 years, and there's not another woman I would want to. I would want on my crew. Yeah, you're probably right about that, John. Sandra on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, the city I live in, in Huntington Beach, it wouldn't matter if there's a woman. I don't think there is, but it wouldn't matter. Because you know why there aren't any women in the Huntington Beach Fire Department? Why? Because the, the vast majority of chicks in Huntington Beach are hot. <laughs> usually married to guys with money. Or come from families with money. Yeah, that's What do they need with being in the fire department? No, no, but I think I think a woman would fit right in in Huntington Beach because all those firemen are pussies. They they they're always in the store shopping for food to make, and they have a. Um, What's wrong with that? Pardon me. What's wrong with shopping for food? Well, I mean, no, that's not it. That's not all. They're um, they have a, a going fire. to the supermarket makes a guy a pussy. Yeah. How so? <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of feminine. Really? Well, uh, yeah. if you're not married, who's supposed to do that? Well, I guess you can do it, but I mean, these guys are always in the store shopping for food. They have a they have a firehouse on the bluff overlooking the ocean. They're always crying out, you know, they need more money. They have to have recognition. I I don't know. I think a woman would fit in well. I mean, I'm sure other cities have really macho fire departments, but um, I don't know. Come down to Huntington Beach. I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd like to know more about the Laguna Fire Department myself. Hang on a second, there, Sandra. Scott, what do you want to say to Sandra? Girlfriend, you are smoking crack, dude. What, what do you expect them to do? They got to eat. They got to cook their own food. There's no woman cooking for them. They okay. I'll see, eat. that's why we need women in the fire department. Somebody can cook back at the fire station. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. true. That's what we yeah. need. Give yeah. these women a fire department issued apron and get them to work. Hey, you know, Tom, check this out. The only woman I know who I could definitely trust in the fire department would be that wrestler named China. <laughs> that's true. She's five foot eleven, one hundred eighty five pounds, solid muscle. You know she can lift about three hundred pounds. Oh yeah, her head. I've met her in person. I can tell you she can lift that and more. That if she came for me, I'd be like this. Okay, it's cool. I'm saved. That's all I know. <laughs> hey Tom, it's your barbecue. I'm just here to get a plate, man. I'm just here to get a plate. Well, thank you so much, Scott, Sandra, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Dave, or I mean Tom, I think I need to attack you on at a on a spot that's near and dear to you, Tom. What's that? That's as a taxpayer, bud. Do tell. I was a I was a Long Beach cop for eleven and a half years, and uh, due to my vast real estate holdings, I had to go somewhere where uh, you know the geography was a little bit better for me. But you got to know that uh, they have a physical fitness incentive pay at Long Beach PD, and uh, the in order to max out on that thing. Uh, female officers were required to do a third less push-ups, a third less sit-ups, and run the uh, the uh, run in a considerable, considerably uh, greater amount of time. If that if that doesn't do it to you, then nothing will. Well, of course it does it to me. I think it's outrageous. The physical demand should be the same for both. Uh, the requirements, the testing, should be the same for both. Anybody who can hack it, get out. This is all in the name of that stupid diversity we're always hearing about. The people so who can do the job should do the job, and the rest should get out. So why don't you tell me why at least one of those city councilmen didn't speak up and get that provision removed? Because they're a bunch of pussies. Are you kidding me? The L.A. City Council? Give me a break. No, that was Long Beach. Tom. Oh, you're talking about Long Beach. Well, like, wherever that, by the way, the L.A. City Council is a bunch of pussies. But in Lo I can't speak for the Long Beach City Council. I don't live in Long Beach. But they're pussies. I, I, I agree with you. I think the testing should be mandatory and standard for everybody, no matter what plumbing you got downstairs. And if you can't hack it, you should get out. And the, uh, you know, where the rubber hits the road on that is it destroys morale across the board. No doubt about it. I do not think we have any need for female cops, female firefighters, female garbage uh, picker-uppers. Uh, you know, we don't need that. We need people who can do the job, who have the same qualifications. If we really believe in equality and fairness, then that's what we should be doing. Yeah, I, that, that's the way I feel, you know. And I won't, I won't draw the line across uh, any sex or, 
or any other uh, qualifying factor. But the deal is standards are standards. And let's either have standards or let's not. Exactly. And the other thing, and I'll ta- I'm talking now as a taxpayer again. Uh, you know, when you put women into an all male or generally male bastion, like firefighting or, or police work, what you're doing is you're inviting these lawsuits that cost us millions and millions of dollars just because somebody said booger in, in the presence of somebody else. Uh, it's outrageous. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, females aren't the only. Uh you know, class that, that act on that and, and cost, cost us money. But um, the, the deal is, it's like I said, I just... They're know, not, but, they're, but they are the class that we absolutely do not need in those fields of endeavor. Well, I, uh, I, I, I'm not going to go here or there with that, but I just say equal pay for equal work and leave it alone. Right. Anyone who can't hang, don't hang. Tom Lockett. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was wondering if you could tell me if guys will sleep with girls that they're really not attracted to. Late at night with a little booze in us. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles. Just got the figures on Boys Night Out. We've only got a couple of hundred tickets left, and then we are done. Sold. Finished. Here's your last shot here. Boys Night Out, Friday, June 17th at the Wiltern Theater here in Los Angeles. 8 p.m. is the time. I am the producer of the event, along with Bobby Slayton, and um, we're going to provide you with an experience you've never had before. It's going to be uh, no chicks, just guys, with all guy comedians. And talking in a way they'll never talk on Comedy Central or on HBO or on the radio. I mean, we can say things we could never, ever say here. And we're going to. No chicks to pinch you and say, yes, yeah, so you think that's funny. Forget it. We're leaving the chicks home. It's going to be boys' night out, boys. It's Friday, June 17th at 8 p.m. Tickets at Ticketmaster. You can call them for details, 213-480-3232. That's 480-3232, or you can go to Ticketmaster.com. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Oh, all these people wringing their hands. We don't have enough female firefighters. Is this a real problem? Is this a real problem? For God's sake, Frank on the Tom Likas show. Hello. All right. Hi. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Frank. All right. Uh, are you familiar with the with the FX show Rescue Me? I've heard of it. I've never seen it. Okay. Well, on one of the episodes, uh, the guys at the firehouse they were getting a, a female uh, fire fire firewoman. Yeah. And they were giving her the cold shirt, and they got a call. And it was a huge place in a, I guess it was a 10-story building. When it came down to do the physical work, even on the show, she could not do it. Right. But right. And you know in real life, that's how it mostly is. Yeah, that's how it is. Later during the show, though, they found something she could actually do. They got a call about two gay guys in their underwear up a tree in the park that did not want to come down. She was able to talk them down. So I think they should just stick to doing that. Yeah. Well. She's a physical labor. To the men that can handle it. Yeah, just lifting that hose is not easy. And if you're not in shape, you can't even do that. Exactly. I don't want uh, I don't want no woman trying to carry me out of a burning place. No, you don't. Like one could. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I don't want to see a, a 5'3", 110 woman trying to lift my 180-pound body out. Yeah, no doubt about it. She, might break, she might break an acrylic nail. Exactly. That's right. I got a quick joke for you, Tom. You could probably use this at the boys' night out. All right, Frank, what is it? Uh, what do you call a woman out of the kitchen? I don't know. Who cares what she's doing out of the kitchen? one eight hundred five eight hundred tom is our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Bobby Tom. How you doing, Papa? Doing okay, son. I'm calling from Laguna, actually. I work down here. I got a little more political sense to it. Yeah. Um, we have seven firehouses in Laguna Beach, and out of seven of them, there's two of them that actually have females in them. Yeah. Now, the way the city of Laguna operates is really... Were they formerly men? <laughs> yeah, formerly, you got it. Just formerly checking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, second gay capital of the world. I've been to Laguna. I know all about it. 
Well, the thing is, is that if they respond to a fire, they're all racing from all different directions to get to the one fire. Now, this fire could be anything so much as a match before it hits the ground, so right. to speak, like small fire, big fire, whatever yeah. it may be. Mm-hmm. Now, they get a commission if they show up first, whichever firehouse shows up. But if there's a female on the firehouse squad that shows up, they get a double commission. How stupid is that? And by the way, I thought we had equality. I thought you were not allowed to discriminate. Oh, I agree. But, however, like you said, Laguna Beach, it's got its own rules. I mean, you got to look at the watch commander and the police force down here as a female. And, I mean, they're proactive. They write more parking tickets than they do speeding tickets. Oh, man. Considering the fact we have a 15 to 25 known pedophile down in the area down here, they don't monitor them. But they're spending their time down here writing tickets out on this thing. And, mind you, the first last thing that we had to happen down here was a fire, and the female had to be brought out by one of the people inside that had to be rescued. Oh, God. For smoke inhalation. Oh, Jesus. That's what goes on here. Outrageous. Well, I'm glad you reported in, David. I was wondering, the minute somebody mentioned Huntington Beach, I'm like, yeah, how could they be oh, yeah, pussies? Oh, yeah, I heard you say Laguna well, Beach, you're all ready for it. I'm like, hey, I'll give you a full detail, anything you need to know. Boy, that, that, well, that was kind of what I was expecting. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, David. How you doing, Dad? Do you care, son? I do. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Tom, I got a story for you. I'm a five-year fireman, Alley Fire Department. Mm-hmm. We're going through the fire academy, okay? Yeah. Two of my classmates cannot raise the 35-foot, 200-pound wooden ladder, fully extended all the way up. What happens to them? They get canned. The women get hurt putting up that same ladder. They get put through the fire academy again. They go out to the field. And then they get out to the field, and the guys want to make sure they're able to put that same ladder up because they never got the chance to do it in the tower. So here they go. They put them through their paces, put up the ladder. They get sued for hazing. Do you believe this? Oh, my God. Oh, this is... this is That's hazing. outrageous. Yeah, they call it hazing. That They're, they're uh, discriminatory, and they're, they're putting them in a situation oh. that uh, it's arduous type of work. And that's what the city council called it when they, they started investigating. They, they called it hazing when... I mean, do your job. That is your job. Put up that ladder is, is doing your job. So now they go and they change this rule where they don't have to put up that 200-pound uh, ladder with all their equipment on. You believe this? I, and I hardly do, but uh, by the same token, nothing surprises me anymore. Barry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, Tom, Tom. How are you, Tom? Do you care, Barry? Tom, I am a long-time listener and a third-time caller. So Thank you. I care. Cool. Listen, I remember about 14, 15 years ago, Cal State Northridge, and I was taking business law, and they put everyone through the same course. And I remember them saying that there were certain instances in law, in, uh, in business, as well as in public policy, uh, in public sector, where... It's possible to discriminate when you can demonstrate that discrimination for a job application is necessary. It's inherent in getting the job filled by the proper applicant. I remember, I think it all started with one guy trying to sue some strip club that he wanted to work there as a hired help, and they successfully argued in court saying, listen, we have a specific clientele. The clientele are horny men. They come to see, you know, awesome-looking women, and you can't, uh, you, sorry, you can't do the job properly. You can't fill the job post. Mm-hmm. How is it possible that lawyers can't defend the firehouses and fire companies and paramedic squads of oh, our state... Well, this is... I, I'm going to answer that question for you, Barry. This is all about political correctness. Uh, a, a strip club is a private business. Of course, they're going to defend themselves. But uh, city of Los Angeles or a county of Los Angeles or any county or city, do uh, you think they want to be uh, in court saying women can't be firefighters and face whatever criticism they're going to get? No, they're pussies. Yes, they're pussies. In this case... The stakes are so much higher. I don't think anyone gives a rat's behind what exactly happened. I agree with you. I think we should all call our local representatives and say no to female firefighters, or at least no to separate standards, uh, separate physical standards, separate testing standards, bonusing women for showing up at a fire. It's outrageous. I agree. If you can find me some big, butch, you know, uh, dikey type of uh, yeah. firefighter that comes up there and she weighs more than I do and she can kick my tail and she can get up that ladder with all the, you know, the gear and the tank and this and that, then, you know, all the more power to her. Right. But to go ahead and to make special concessions for some, you know, female, I mean, when she really she should be... You know, because we need to show that women can be anything they want to be. <laughs> Little girls can grow up to be anybody, anything. I tell you, we're going to hell in a handbasket driven tow behind an ambulance. Yeah, I know. With a, with a fire truck escort, you know? No doubt. 
Hey, Tom, before I hand off, you're going to have to owe me a little, uh, uh, or actually, I owe you a little, I told you so. Last time I called in, I don't know, hopefully we can just deviate a quick second from the subject matter here. It was after Amber Frey's testimony or her uh, conversations, her tape conversations were leaked, and you had a whole episode about it, a whole thing on the radio about it. And I called in saying, hey, don't be so quick to think and write off this thing that they're not going to go ahead and convict this guy, uh, what was it, Peterson? Yeah. If they could convict those Menendez boys, remember I said this to you, if they can convict those Menendez boys after they sat in jail for a year and a half waiting for their shrink's testimony to be admitted as the testimony, Money, uh, don't be surprised. And you said, "Well, it takes twelve guys," and then you and then you. Right, yeah, it took, I, I said that indeed, and I also believe that, uh, frankly, uh, they didn't have the evidence to convict Scott Peterson, but they did it anyway. Unusual. I'm surprised. I can see. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Heather on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Long time listener, second time caller. Thank you. Um, I'm on the other side of it. I'm a woman that does a predominantly man's job, and there are women that I work with that can't do the job right. and receive special treatment because of it. But yeah. yet, if a man can't do it, then he's fired. Right. So I totally agree with you guys. I don't believe in the special treatment. If well, they can't do it, they can't do it. Can't do it, you can't do it. Dumb like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show The Tom Likas Show 1-800-5800-TOM Let's say hello to Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay, Dave. First time caller, uh, newer listener. Uh-huh. Uh, listen, I wanted to rebut on uh, Sandra, who recently called uh, insulting the Huntington Beach Fire Department. I actually worked for Huntington Beach for two and a half years, and those guys are the exact opposite of everything that she had to say. And, um, you know, she can keep her opinions to herself, but I don't know if she fully understands, but when guys are shopping every day, you have to feed the crew. You know, and rather than going out to eat every day, everybody pitches in out of their own pockets and goes to the store and buys food for lunch uh -huh. and dinner, which is, you know, pretty understandable. But, you know, that, I'm sorry, that really, really upset me. I'm a current firefighter I don't now. blame you. And anybody who knows anything about firefighting knows that uh, while it's a very dangerous job, treacherous, uh, and well, what have you, it, you also spend a lot of downtime just sitting around. You know, you, there's a large misconception in the world or in this country, at least, about firefighters. And a lot of people think you spend a lot of time sitting around, but, you know, we have a, a normal work day just like anybody else. Well, of course you do, but uh, there's a lot of downtime, and, and there you are waiting for another dangerous assignment. Exactly. So, of course, you've got to eat. But, we, you know, we have to do... got to be ready. Else. We have to clean our fire station, right. clean our apparatus, yeah. stay physically fit, yeah. go do fire prevention inspections, do fire training. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a rookie, a new guy, you got to train him, make sure he's successful yes. or she... Whatever the matter may be. Yeah. Um, and we need you there waiting for us to call you. We need you to be waiting. Well, I like I like to know how Sandra feels when she calls and we show up. I really would because yeah. when you know, when it hits the fan and people need us, you know, they want us there right away. They like you a lot better then, I'll bet. Oh, they they love you right at that moment, I'll tell you that. But um you know, for all the guys that gave their lives in New York, it's just it, it it's pretty sad that somebody would come off and say that on the air about any Fire department. I think it's outrageous, and uh, uh, again, I uh, I think people have no idea how much risk you guys take every day, and uh, the physical uh, 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 ability that it takes, and uh, to be in shape all the time and ready to go at a moment's notice. Well, it's you know, it's a lot of hard work. It took me about six and a half years to get a job as a full time firefighter. Right. And you know, it's no joke. It's just like any other thing. If it's worth it, you know, you got to work for it. And for all the women that want to be firefighters, that's okay. You know, if they can do the job, that's great. We, I have firefighter, or female firefighters in my department. I respect them. They do the job. They tow their weight. You know, when I was in the fire academy, we had some females that couldn't cut it, and they dragged the rest of us down. Do they have the same standards for women as for men in your fire department? Yes. yes. That, that's a good thing. Because as the, uh, the, as the consumer... And, you know, I hope I'm never a consumer, but uh, if I were ever to be a consumer, I want there to be equal standards for everybody. And that means tough standards for everybody. And those who can't hack it shouldn't be in. 
Absolutely. You know, and, you know, for us, especially when you're working with somebody, you want to know that that person can get you out just as well as you can get them out. Or, you know, whatever the case may be. But you want to know that you can take care of each other. And it is a physically demanding job, and there is a lot of downtime. But then again, you know, if there's downtime during the day, chances are you're going to be up in the middle of the night. You know, you're working Mm -hmm. a 24-hour shift. You know, Mm -hmm. you go to bed at 10 Mm o'clock. Once you get woke up three times in the middle of the night before you get up at 6 a.m., you're pretty tired at the end of the day. But at night when you're running these calls and people are having... TCs or traffic accidents, fires, medical problems, whatever the issue may be, you still have to put on your nice face, think about customer service, and, you know, the patients or the citizens, you know, problem, because to them it's a major emergency. So There's a lot of stuff involved that people don't know about, Dave. Thank you. Our email address is my name, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.